Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Let's uh, start the afternoon session with uh, Jennifer from Edinburgh, and she will talk about resummation for jet processes at the LAC. So, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you also to the organizers for uh, inviting me to, for my first time at GGI. I've had a very good week so far. It's been uh, great. So I'm going to be talking about high energy resummation, or at least high energy logs, uh, in the context of the Large Hadron Collider and uh, the impact that we may observe there. So to set the scene, instead of having a long introduction, I thought with just one picture, we can kind of uh, establish some of the scales that I'll be talking about today. Now, obviously this is a bit of an exaggeration. Uh, it's a genuine CMS event. I didn't make it up, but it has 12 jets, each with transverse momentum above 50 GV. So there's a lot going on here. But I put the numbers in bold because 12 jets is not really of immediate concern to most of us. Uh, when I talk about multiple jets, I do mean potentially large numbers of jets. So not just adding one jet, but you know, five, we're seeing in distributions five jets are significant. There's, you know, you only ask for two. Also, the 50 GV is important. We saw this morning about the different scales that we described. We used to talk articles at very low scales, but uh, that today's talk, we're at 50 GV or 30 or 100, we're not at 1 GV. So uh, everything I'm talking about is corrections within the hard scattering matrix element itself. And here, although it's all just QCD in this particular event, um, we still have many scales. It's a uh, um, many scale with uh, its own transverse momentum, the vast majority just above 50 GV, but with some difference. Then if you take any pair, they will have an invariant mass between them, which will give you a, a, another scale. And you can carry on with subsets until you get all the way up to S hat. And the reconstructed S hat for this event was between five and six TV. So that's giving you a big uh, range of scales already just within the hard scattering matrix element. And it's these logs that we're concerned with today that uh, the logs in the invariant map divided by these transverse scales can become large and therefore damage the convergence of our perturbativity. So to be slightly more precise about which logs I'm talking about, not entirely, but slightly more than uh, in other ways of presenting this, I've defined this PS2 to mean the integral over uh, um, two final jets. So the whole the whole expression for the inclusive cross section, you would do that integral as well. What I'm defining within this n two jet plus is everything except the integral over the last two particles. So if you don't integrate over the outer two particles, this is what you you will find. And if you do that integral at leading order, you have your leading order matrix elements. You can do the tree level calculation. So they have different behavior with S and you can order that in this way here. And next to leading order, then yeah, your one loop diagrams your box, for example, will give you a log in S over T. But also the integral of the third jet will also be generated over S over T. So these rise both in virtuals and within the reals. Uh, and occur, and the pattern continues all the way up uh, in alpha s. So vertically, we'll be counting in logs. Uh, every section I show you will be accurate to at least leading order plus leading log, which are the red bits. But the dots here are significant because we have been adding uh, or increasing our accuracy in both directions, and I'll talk about that a bit. In some contexts, when people talk about high energy resummation, they're also talking about uh, small x corrections, logs in one over x. Here, I'm not, in fact, for the experimental studies we're looking at, our x values are, are not small. They're typically not small, so these are quite small corrections. Um, and all that I'm talking about are the, the logs in, in s over t. Good. Now, this is not the first time this week we've encountered the high energy a nice introduction to that on Tuesday. Uh, 
where there are a number of the properties that he explained there, which will be important for what we're doing today. So the statement of the limit is that for outgoing particles, any pairwise invariant mass is becoming large, while all the transverse scales are, remain, are remaining about the same order. So the largeness of the invariant mass comes from a separation of density inverse momentum. And the first important property that happens in that limit is these local pieces are in the process. So I've deliberately tried to make this look as unlike the diagram as I can, but the point is that you have end pieces and then you have uh, vertical ladder pieces and you have extra vertices for extra particles and they don't depend on each other, provided you order rapidity and have this strong rapidity ordering. So multiplicity is not a problem anymore instead of seven, then it's not, it's one extra multiplication. That's all it is. So it becomes very easy to go to arbitrary of quarks and gluons. Routinely, we do that to about 20 or so. But for us, the exact number of and gluons is a parameter in our flow integration. Um, also, what isn't written on the slide, but the fact that these pieces are independent allow us to add color new pieces as well. So this is for pure QCD shown here, but we can also have, for example, if these are quarks, we can have an extra W boson effect. The accuracy continues and we can still make our prediction. The second property of the high energy limit that uh, we use is that we can predict already what uh, momentum configurations and what flavor channels will have a leading logarithmic correction and which will not. And that comes from Reggie scaling, which I mean, these are long established ideas that tell you depending on the spin of the particle exchanged in, in an effective T channel, you can predict the scaling of that amplitude with S and that directly correlates with the log once you've done the integrals. So we can count and organize using this principle and later, uh, later in the talk, I'll give an example of where we go beyond. So we're using the high energy limit to allow us to capture all these logs. We're not quite using the high energy limit in that we're not being as extreme as we can be. If you can't in the strict limit, you can throw away a lot of components and a lot of pieces if you're operating at leading log accuracy. And you can get compact expressions, which iterate very nicely. However, Although we're very pleased with the increase in center of mass energy at the LHC, it is clearly not infinite. And so within the high energy jets framework, we've always tried to tread this line where we're using the high energy limit to give us the accuracy and, and give us predictions we couldn't otherwise get, but where we cover and keep as much of the underlying matrix elements as we can. It's all valid within the quoted logarithmic accuracy. We, we're not changing that. Um, one key feature is that we have always tried to keep our poles in the right place. And actually in LHC energies, the difference between a T hat and a minus Q perp squared can be an order of magnitude or more. It can be really very large. So keeping those poles and also when we have extra particles, keeping some of the icono poles help us to keep more of the underlying physics without affecting the logarithmic accuracy. Having Worried about the logarithmic accuracy, of course, we want to restore fixed order accuracy. I'll come to talking about what we do for next to leading order later on. But in practice within HI2, the way we do this is we start from fixed order leading order samples. So it, it can be any event generator, provided that there's a Lizouche event file. And we take them at all available multiplicities. And so there's an example here of a three jet event where this would be the input, and then we add the high resummation of includes the virtual corrections, but also includes extra gluons, uh, which can be within the jets or outside the jet, but unresolved, with the constraint that we keep the rapidities of the jets fixed and the number fixed. So this would be rejected if that formed its own jet, but it's part of the three jet correction if, if not. And the new event weight is written here, I've deliberately written this in an agnostic way. In the original descriptions, it was very much 
the high matrix element reweighted by this ratio. Now that the order has been reversed, it's reweighted with that. Ratio. It can be either, it's just philosophical how you think about what to expand it. You can check that order accuracy and your leading log accuracy. And within this uh, description here again, it's only the matrix we change. We make approximation to the phase space. Um, we use standard collinear factor, standard PDFs, whatever is in the LHA PDF, for example. So here's the advert public code. It is fully public. Uh, as of earlier this year, uh, with the high 2.2 release, we have really thorough documentation now. There are a lot of examples, lots of benchmarks you can uh, play with and uh, apply yourself. And I mentioned that we can do this to processes with uh, color neutral particles. The full list of the available processes is uh, along here. And uh, I discussed some of the more recent ones today. I'll show you some of them. So I wanted to, uh, I was trying to decide what the first set of plots I should show were. And I've chosen these ones because they're some of the most recent that we've actually will appear in a forthcoming Atlas study. Uh, sadly, I can't show you the data points with these yet. The preliminary plots do exist, but they're waiting on NNLO um, predictions to add to them, which are proving quite difficult. So in the meantime, we have to put up with comparing just to, to fixed order. So here, uh, the red lines are the predictions from high energy jets with these extra all order logarithms. Um, then it's just the ratio level processes, the, the three jet and the two jet processes. And the yellow dashed lines are, are NLO predictions. And the Y axis here are a ratio of the inclusive three jet to the inclusive two jet ratios. So um, the, this plot on the left is as a function of the rapidity separation between the hardest two jets. And on the right, it's the rapidity separation, oh, sorry, I've missed a delta Y there. That should say delta Y FB, um, the rapidity separation of forward and the most backward jet. So you can see the QCD is behaving very differently with, with a small difference in how you define your jets. Here it's fairly flat uh, and with relatively small deviations between even the leading order and the NLO line. It's much more dramatic here. The first thing that you see is once you've got um, a YFB of four, so that would be jets plus or minus two, these are not particularly extreme jets, then the three jet leading, leading order. So that's an, an example of the perturbative instability that I was talking about at the beginning. You, you see these are not smaller corrections. Uh, the high and the NLO lines in this case are limited to remain inside one because for us, the inclusive three jet is strictly a subset of the inclusive two jet. And you see they start off with a similar slope in fairly good agreement. And then the NLO uh, flattens out while the high energy jets uh, goes out and actually reaches up towards one in that case. So by the time we're at the larger values, everything has at least an Uh, just to try and show some different variables, really 30 odd in the study. So um, here we've got one as a function of uh, HT2, but now on the y-axis we're showing an average number of jets. It's similar in spirit to the inclusive three jet over two jet, but it's a bit more sensitive to the makeup of that extra radiation. So as a function of uh, HT2 or momentum in general, we saw not very big difference. Again, this is uh, the rapidity separation between most forward and backward. It flattens out. It cannot go above three because it consists only of two and three jet events. Whereas uh, including the all orders uh, within our prescription gives you much larger values. So that's an interesting study that hopefully will be out soon. But one of the motivations for the whole high energy jets project in the first place was uh, in, when considering vector boson fusion and Higgs plus two jets, because that's an example exactly where the experiments impose a large rapidity separation. They impose a large invariant mass because that suppresses the QCD component with respect to the weak component. And they want to study the electroweak uh, couplings to the Higgs, obviously. 
it's also theoretically where we have the most difficulties because the leading order, full leading order is already one massive loop because of the top quark loop that couples the gluons to the Higgs. And so even at leading order, we don't have the results with full finite mass and uh, loop corrections for um, 4G above. There, we have to take approximations in some way. However, here the high energy limit really comes into play because there are these very nice papers by Vittorio and collaborators um, now 20 years ago showing that have a Higgs boson. For us, we still have these independent pieces. We add jets, but they don't go loop. They don't add a leg to your massive loop. That means then that um, however many jets we have in our final state, triangles and boxes, and the triangles and the boxes we know. We can actually uh, use the high energy limit here to give us access to these large jet multiplicity. Uh, um, so in the plots I'll show, we took the best we could get from Sherpa and open loops, um, which was performed to the highest available accuracy at the time. So I picked the M12 plot here because that's exactly the variable the experiments will cut on. Um, to explain the different lines, this blue line was the best we felt we could construct from the fixed order. So uh, it's leading order with full finite quark mass and effects uh, at two jets, weighted with the effect of the NLO K factor in the infinite top mass limit. Um, then the red line is the high energy jets all order result also in the infinite top mass limit. And the blue line contains our finite top mass and finite bottom quark mass results as well. Um, because we operate at the amplitude level, we can just add the two and then square the sum and get the interference. Although here, actually, we saw negligible effects from the bottom quark mass at all. So um, what we found in doing this is resummation on, on its own, reduces the cross-section at large invariant mass. Like um, but even the difference, even within the high energy jet spine, out here where you're doing the experimental analysis, the finite mass effects actually reduce the cross-section in this right half by a further 11%. And the net effect is if you want uh, efficiency of VBF cuts, the fixed order rest tells you 9% of the QCD is left, but the all-order correction gave us 4% uh, was left. And, which had been seen in, in previous studies, that the, see, these all-order corrections uh, predict a much greater suppression in this region of interest. I won't today just for time, but we saw very similar results for vector boson scattering. Again, cuts are applied to select the region of large invariant mass, and we see large different distributions uh, appearing there. Now, whenever we did uh, our predictions, we always had to start at two jets and above. And this is because of the structure where you have the endpoints in the skeleton. So we always had two hard jets and then added our corrections to that. But we noticed in the progress, uh, or in the process, sorry, of the previous Higgs jet studies, that actually, if you treat your Higgs boson and look at the scaling, as you do for the colored quarks and gluons, then the Reggie scaling applies in exactly the same way. So uh, these are two examples that if you calculate using the original formula, uh, you can check that the infinite do the correlated behavior. And when you track through in the integrals, it tells you that you can capture the logs uh, a very similar way. Um, with one less jet, because what we can swap a jet out and put a Higgs boson in. So it pictures, before our Higgs plus jet events always looked like this. We always had two hard jets, which were the straight lines, and this dashed line is to indicate the extra Higgs boson there. But uh, now, because we can have an extra piece with the Higgs boson on the outside, for the first time we can do inclusive Higgs plus one jet results. And of course, on that as well. So even with the two jet results we had before, we've extended the region where the resummation is applied 
for those same events. And in doing so, we see a similar effect on distributions. Um, so far, the data is uh, still a bit inconclusive and not very tidy, but will be improved considerably uh, to come. But the, the same sort of behaviors we saw carried on. Axis here on in this plot is this delta yf, which is the minimum rapidity separation between any two uh, quartz gluons or Higgs in the final state. So uh, this was a distribution we couldn't do before, but now have access to, but it could almost be the delta Y distribution from the QCD. QCD radiation across all these processes follows very similar patterns. And we see the suppression again at large delta Y. Good. Now I said I wanted to describe what we're doing to uh, increase our overall uh, accuracy. Um, and we've approached that in two different ways. Obviously, uh, these are steps towards a, a bigger uh, quoted accuracy, but we started by looking at transverse momentum. And the reason for that was because, again and again, saw compared to data that hydrojet's predictions tended to overshoot at large transverse momentum, which is not really a surprise. You know, when I stated the high energy limit at the start, I said the invariant masses are large and the transverse momenta are all about the same magnitude that, that of the high energy limit. And if you're in a region here that is related, where in this plot, the jet cut was 30 GeV and we're measuring a transverse momentum of the leading jet up to 700 GeV. So it's not a region that we would um, claim to have control over. However, it's clearly a region we measure. So we wanted to improve our predictions there. And this um, uh, plot here shows you the first step that we took towards that. We suspected going to next to leading logs would help, but we were trying to assess actually where the biggest impacts were. So this is actually just a leading order plot, and it shows as a function of PT, the total W plus three jet uh, cross section, but then you can divide it into its components. So the blue leading log ones are the registry predictions where uh, you um, uh, uh, which would give you a leading log contribution, so the highest power in the invariance. The green ones are next to leading log, and the red ones are the other. So if you plot this as a function of rapidity separation or invariant mass, you will find the blue ones massively dominate out at large values, and that's the statement of the limit. But here, at large invariant mass, there's very little dependence and that these values, actually the leading log and the leading log are about 40% each. So in the original high implementation, in these regions, our resummation is controlling 40% of the cross section and the rest was just being added in a very brute force way from the leading order samples. But if we include the next to leading log configurations, then we can control 80% of the cross section instead. So uh, although that's just, of full mix started because we knew we would immediately uh, have a large impact uh, on our the behavior in these regions. So these are some examples of configuration which, uh, which you can see because they have extra quark propagators. If you were to write these out in a T-channel diagram, you would have extra QQ bar pairs in the scaling. The next uh, attempt to improve our prediction at large transverse momentum was in the fixed order direction rather than the logarithmic accuracy uh, direction. So for a long time, we always scaled our inclusive cross sections to NLO, but, uh, and we're not yet in a position to do the mapping of the phase space between our all order phase space and NLO is incredibly complex and uh, not clear how to do consistently but we can do one better than just a, a K factor by doing bin by bin map. And so we do this thing, the high prediction translated to NLO for every distribution we want to study. And then every event, uh, every bin, sorry, in the histogram, we give a new weight where we take the original weight that comes out of high two 
and then we multiply by the NLOK factor derived from distributions like this, applied to the, the two and three jet uh, components. Because, well, uh, or, and the, the resummation part of the cross section. Because when we're adding four jet, five jet events and above, then really has nothing like that. So um, we, it doesn't make sense to apply the scaling there. And if you again put expand each of these components in alpha s and in log, you can check explicitly that every bin will give you next to leading order accuracy and leading log accuracy is not spoiled in the process. So um, here's the result of both of those things, adding the next to leading log configurations and adding the NLO matching. The blue line is the uh, prediction from uh, the first implementation of high. The red line is uh, a pure NLO prediction and the data were the original Atlas data points. And when you perform uh, the matching procedure I described, then your uh, line in the middle uh, gives very close agreement to um, uh, the data, actually improving on both. So it's reassuring to see that it goes in between, but uh, also we were um, very pleased to see what a good job of it did of describing the transverse uh, momentum distributions. This is of a jet and this is of a, a W boson in this case. You'll notice that the scale variation band has been massively reduced. The high one predictions always had very large bands. Okay. So uh, we always have a very large on those um, because we can do no better than leading order. We did, it was almost exactly a, a normalization. For whenever we were doing predictions, we used to look at the um, distributions normalized to one. And if you do that, the band almost completely disappeared. However, um, when we do this matching procedure, you see what's left is not quite as small as the NLO band. And that's exactly due to these extra four jet and above components that, that we added. We, we tested t removing them to check uh, that. Um, and actually, if you did that, it was an unfeasibly small band that really was not reasonable. And we also saw that we had to include the events with four jets and above to get the good, the central values. Um, I, the, my, my last point here was just uh, to emphasize that actually, we were talking about large PTs, of course, that's traditionally dealt with with parton showers. And this is something we've been looking at for any years back to original high plus Ariadna descriptions a long time ago, but there are uh, newer versions with Pythia. I invite you to check these more recent uh, papers to see that. So um, I'll finish there, giving you a flavor of predictions to capture within high energy jets and uh, the framework that we've developed to allow us to actually assess them within the LHC. Today, I stuck to the uh, workshop topic of LHC, but obviously we're beginning to look forward to the FCC, where if we get to such large, even larger center of mass entities, these effects are, are even larger uh, still. And uh, I will stop there and encourage you to have a look at the public code. Okay, thank you for this nice presentation. Questions, comments? Remarks? So could you please go back to, I think, slide number two or three, where we see this saturation of the... Uh, no, 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 a bit further. A bit. Yes, this one. So actually, uh, let's see. Uh, maybe not this one, but the, the next. Oh, yes, this one, yes. So it saturates the next to leading order saturates at uh, roughly three jets. So what would we take to, to, to bring this a bit further to the right? So do I understand that you need a PP to, to jets at next to next to leading order, right? It would contain a four jet component. Four gens. Exactly. Right. It, it wouldn't have the same 
I see, I see. And uh, if we stick to this this figure, in the very beginning, it seems that the next to leading order is a bit overshoots, or from the other way around, the the, the hay result undershoots. Do you understand the reason behind this uh, this uh, different shape, right? So between zero and two delta y. There is a slight difference in shape there. Um... I mean, we're, our description is quite different. Okay. In that case, they're very narrow wings. Uh -huh. All jets are very Ah, okay. And one, you know, the difference of, you know, they're at plus or minus mm -hmm. 0.5. Okay. So, um, in the next the order calculation, which... Okay. I see, I see. Okay. So, question or comment? Remark. Yeah, so one more from me. If you if you go to the W jet jet. Yeah, right at the very end. At the very end, yes. So sorry for bringing okay. you back to the very beginning and then to the very end. Okay, so in this case, there's the hay to NLO, right? This uh, this green band, for example, on the on the left hand side. So more or less understand how to calculate the scale uncertainty from an fixed order calculation, but what do you do to do the same with hay? In fact, exactly the same. Exactly the same, it's okay. The same, that we have uh, our alpha S evaluated at a normalization scale. Okay. We have the factorization scale okay. for the normal uh, PDFs. We vary them independently and, and take the okay. window. That's it. So okay. it's exactly the same. Okay, so exactly the same. actually there are cases um, for other experimental analyses. We've been asked to provide predictions and uh, they normalize everything to see an inclusive W uh, cross section, which we cannot calculate. Okay. What we do in that case, or have done, is uh, normalize our predictions with the NLO, mm -hmm. and that already actually reduces the scale. Okay. To alpha S cubed, it's the same. Okay, the understood. Same okay. Okay, thank you. So, questions, comments, maybe at this point? If there's no question, please thank Jennifer again.